Hey everyone. So today my daughter's car, um, the radio stopped working. The battery died and after jump starting it, the radio pops on for a second, but no sound comes out. So we're going to go through the steps to try to make it work again. My son and I first looked at it and what we did is we checked the breaker always. That's the first thing you want to check. And what you do is pop off this panel here. This car has like four breaker panels and I'll show you a couple of those. But this is the one that you see here. It says the radio, or sorry, the infotainment number nine. So number nine is right here, right there. It's a 10 amp fuse and it looks good. That's one breaker panel there. Another breaker box is under here. You have to remove these two. And there, the other one's back there. Uh, there's no guide or anything or key here for what they do. So you have to look it up online, but none of them are um, used for the infotainment system. Uh, another breaker panel is right here. Um, that's your positive terminal there and then and more breakers and relays right here this one has a key uh, nothing about infotainment here so we're not going to go that another place to look is back in this panel here in the trunk <laughs> this i think comes out easier if i pull this up but i just didn't and then there's a little plastic piece right here Music comes out easier. As you can see, it's an easy project. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then if you look at, well, no key, you have to look it up online. I'll put a link in the video description, but um, one of these is for the rear subwoofer and um, a few other things. I can't remember what, but a few infotainment related things, but none of those are blown. So that's fine. But after doing some more searching online, it sounds like the capacitors can go bad on the car stereo, or sorry, the infotainment control unit, ICO. So we're gonna take that apart and see if we can resolder on some new capacitors. It says high performance sound for a second, and then you see nothing happening. So it, it works to some extent, but uh, most likely it's the capacitors that have gone bad on the board that's behind this screen. So brought back the infotainment control module. All right, so this is what I was getting before, which is DC02, permanent fault, control module communication, communication missing. Audio unit does not work. Display does not work. The most transceiver is faulty in one of the control modules. All right, so it's just basically saying serious problems with the ICM. We'll see if it's something we can repair with uh, some new capacitors, uh, if not, Probably have to send it out or look for a used one if I can find one with the code. Remember, right? You just need to remove the bottom, bottom T25s, and I've removed them all before, but I think just the bottom ones have to come out. Okay, so two screws there. Uh, didn't get much easier than that, huh? As soon as I get this loose, I'm gonna turn the ignition off because I don't want to make anything worse or shorten anything. And I'm just gonna disconnect all the wires back here. The one to be most careful with is the fiber optic wire here. Because really what I need to get at is this little board back here the one behind the screen, pull it out and see how the uh, capacitors look on it. Tabs right here I'm going to push down on. Okay, it looks like it separates here. This, these little tabs are taped down.
to get this piece to come out. I think this tape here is just kind of slowing me down. Yeah, that's all it was. The board I need to get at is right back in here. Face plate. The way it's kind of folded up in there, it gives me enough play to pull it out. That's nice. Just preference. <clears throat> the other thing is, before I touched all this, I keep touching metal to discharge any kind of static I got built up. Even an edge. Step down. Ah! So there's that. What I'm gonna replace is this right here should be the 100 microfarads, and this should be the 10. So one, two, three, four, and then this is that single one. None of them look bad. I don't see any leaking or anything. Um, and I don't have a tester, so I'm going off somebody else's guide. A lot of times you can send these out and a company will redo this for you, but it's like $350. So definitely want to try to do it myself. Okay guys, no need to send comments on how bad my soldering technique is here. This was my first time and learning about surface mount solder. I definitely made a lot of mistakes and well, it shows in the final product. All right, so those have all been removed, but have I done any irreversible damage here? All these others came off pretty good. That one, that one, and this one was the big one. This one came off okay. This is the one that went bad. So I stuffed the little metal tab back in there. I'm gonna try to put some solder on there. So, mistakes were made, and I think this is pretty terrible looking, but they, I might have made contact with all of the contacts. It's really hard to tell. It just looks like terrible, but the hair soldered down, believe it or not, and we'll see. As I'm reassembling this, I'll take a moment to say that I learned since then that uh, I should have used hotter temperature on my solder gun and that would have hopefully released the solder quicker without damaging the capacitors. And also I should have practiced on some other circuit boards instead of the one critical thing I was trying to fix. So obviously that didn't work as I hoped and I had to resort to getting one on eBay. See if I get lucky. Um, I'm pretty sure it's gonna tell me that I need the code and not sure how I'm gonna resolve that because Volvo said I needed the original VIN number. And this one is a used part. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that there's some way to get around that either using um, Vita or a code reader or maybe I can take it to the dealer. But first thing, I just want to see what happens if I connect it and power it on. And here I made a critical error by not connecting the second cable, which goes, seems like it just goes into the CD player um, and the climate control. And I thought, well, it's probably not needed for this quick test, but it actually sent me down a rabbit hole by not connecting it. So I haven't connected up the climate control cable or the fiber optic that goes to the CD player. 
We'll see how mad it is. Nothing. <laughs> Maybe I had a different problem all along. Hmm. I don't know what else I can try. For the next while, I sat here in despair, wondering what else I could do. And I went down this rabbit hole of checking the ECM. And that's that um, breaker panel or fuse panel under the driver's steering wheel. That whole module seemed like maybe it could be bad after I did some reading. And I did a lot of work to try to pull it out. And it was too much for that night and I gave up. But as I was laying in bed, I realized, you know what? I didn't check that fuse that was labeled amplifier. And so I went back and checked that and the fuse was burnt out. So I thought, ah, this is it, I found it. But since I hadn't connected that second cable, it still didn't work. And I thought, oh, that's it. Don't know what else to do. Until uh, days later when I came back and connected that second cable to the new eBay one and had that fuse replaced and it all worked. All right, so after a lot of uh, banging my head against the wall. I finally decided to check again uh, the fuses and realized that one I missed earlier was the amplifier. One, it's a full 30 amp fuse, number two. And when I looked at it, it was blown. It's very important to check this too because after I, you know, re-soldered those capacitors, it still didn't work. I went and bought another one on eBay that was used, um, put that in and that still didn't work. And then that made me go down this path. And still it wasn't working after replacing that. And that was just because I was being a bonehead and I forgot to reconnect the second cable to the CD player. And thought that wasn't needed, but it is needed. So once all the fiber cables and the special plugs in the back were connected to the climate control CD player, infotainment screen, all that was connected, then it worked. So where the problem really was, was most likely that 30 amp fuse. So huge waste of time and money when it really was just a 30 amp fuse for like 50 cents or whatever it costs. So hopefully you can avoid all that headache and just find the right fuse next time.